God in this world in which we live and when men and women in law enforcement are battling an upward battle, we come today to remember those who died fighting to protect the dignity and freedom of mankind. On this spot 39 years ago and just a few miles away, domestic terrorism showed its ugly face when three men paid the ultimate sacrifice in order for this community to live in freedom. Today we again remember Sergeant Edward O'Grady Police Officer Waverly Chipper Brown, Green Security Guard Peter Page. Too many in our society have chosen the road of evil, but because of the bravery, bravery of Eddie Chipper and Peter displayed that day, and in this community, is a much safer place than it was years ago. They truly were courageous protectors and true guardians of freedom. Yes, this day will always be a day of commemoration and a remembrance in Rockland County. We again make this promise that we will never forget them or their families who have endured much. We now remember those wounded on that fatal day and continue to uphold them in your arms. As these wreaths are placed here today, may it be but a token of remembrance of the great sacrifices that these men made on our behalf. For we ask it in thy name, amen.
pizza. Hold up. Remarks, Chief Retired Brent Newberry. Chief Newberry was a lifelong resident of Nyack when he was appointed as a Village of Nyack police officer in March of 1990. And he served with the Nyack and Orangetown Police Departments before joining the South Nyack Granby Police Department in 2005. Chief Newberry served as Sergeant prior to his appointment as Chief of Police in 2013. He also serves as President of the Rockland County Patrolman's Benevolent Association and Vice President of the Police Chiefs Association of Rockland County as well as serving as the executive officer for the Rockland Rescue Entry and Counterterrorism team for many years. Chief Newberry holds a bachelor's degree from St. Thomas Aquinas College and a master's degree from the University of Phoenix. Chief Newberry and his family reside here in Nyack. Ladies and gentlemen, Chief Brent Newberry. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I worked for the Nyack Police Department from March 5th, 1990 until December 31st, 1990. Not a very long time, not even a full year. But it was an unforgettable experience. We were a small department, 23 members. Our cars were old, our equipment was crusty. We still carried revolvers when most departments were changing over to more modern pistols. The uniforms that I wore came off a rack in the locker room. They were worn by I don't know who for I don't know how long. And yeah, they looked like it. Uh, old school policing, you could say. Hats on in the or on your head if you weren't sitting in the car. Shoes were shine. No coffee, no newspapers in the patrol cars. No AM FM in the cars either. I can remember coming to work on Christmas Eve. The sergeant said two words to me, foot patrol. It was 20 degrees out. I thought he was joking. That was no joke. Growing up in Nyack, I was very aware of the Briggs murder. I'd lived in Nyack, student at Nyack High School in October of 1981, and can remember driving by the scene where the getaway car had crashed at 6th and Broadway. I was with my mother, we saw the wrecked car and heavy police presence. All of Nyack knew that that crime was a big deal. It was a game changer. And just a few years later, I was working there. On more than one occasion, when I finished up working a shift in the village, I would stay in the basement and spend some time in what we called the Brinks Room. This room was filled with file cabinets containing investigative notes, interview transcripts, court documents, 50 or 60 pictures on the wall of people who were involved in the organization that committed the crime. Just an incredible amount of stuff. I got to read notes from nine police officers who had responded, and then I had the privilege of being able to ask them about their first-hand knowledge when I was working with them. I was able to get the inside story from many of the people who were there in October of 1981, and the details were incredible. 
But one thing became very clear to me as I worked in the Nyack Police Department, and that was that the Nyack Police Department was still mourning the Brinks murders. We've all experienced loss in our lives, but the sudden tragic murder of two people that you work with was a monumental event. Men who wore the same uniform drove the same cars that you'd worked a street fair with the week before. Not going home, their families crushed with grief. Along with that, another murder at the Nanuet Mall. Another man who showed up to work who won't be going home. Another family crushed with sadness. Rockland County would never be the same, and the Nyack Police Department would never be the same. It hung on for almost another nine years, and then the Nyack Police Department would go away. On December 31st, 1990, the clock struck midnight, and there was no more Nyack Police Department. The official reason was that it cost too much money or that there wasn't enough tax revenue. But people who lived here they remember the Nyack Police Department fondly. And although I would have loved to see the Nyack Police Department remain, today as I stand here, I understand why it had to go. Police departments all over the nation experience the loss of members far too frequently. The Nyack Police Department, in my opinion, simply could not overcome its loss. So to all the men and women who work for the Nyack Police Department, I say thank you for your service. It was my honor to have worked with you. It was a privilege to have worn the same uniform as you. And it was a privilege to have worn the same uniform as Chipper and Eddie. Thank you. Stay safe and God bless you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I said a prayer today for Chippy, Eddie, and Peter. And I knew God must have heard. I felt the answer in my heart although he spoke no word. I didn't ask for fame. I knew you wouldn't mind. I asked him to send treasures of a far more lasting kind. I asked that he be near you in heaven at the start of each day to grant you peace and blessings and family and friends who share your way. I asked for eternal life for all in all things great and small, I pray the most of all that my God rest your souls. On behalf of the Brown Frazier family, which includes but is not limited to Chippy's son, Greg, his daughters Karen and Lorraine, his grandchildren that he never saw, and his companion Mary Laporta, I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge Undersecretary Bob Van my family loves you and you have always been there for them. We'd like to thank you for your presence at the 39th Annual Brinks Memorial Ceremony to remember Brown, Brady, and Paige, who made the ultimate sacrifice and gave their lives on October 20th, 1981, to protect the residents of Rockland County after the Brinks armored car was robbed by six men who are members of the Weather Underground. Peter Page, Brinks guard, was killed and the van in which six men were riding was stopped by a police barricade, and the two police officers were brutally murdered. That was Sergeant Edward O'Grady and my cousin, Officer Waverly Chippy Brown, and Peter Page were cut down in the prime of their lives. The memory of that day will always remain in our episodic memories forever. In closing, Waverly, Eddie, and Peter all knew the dangers involved in their jobs and how precious life was each and every day. We're very grateful to you that gather here every year, especially in 2020, in light of the dual pandemic, one which addresses COVID-19 and the other which illumines institutional racism and personal and systemic racism to remember and pay tribute to these three brave heroes. We don't live in a perfect world, but I miss Chippy every day, and I miss O'Grady every day, and I miss Paige. It seems like it was just yesterday that this happened. It's 39 years ago. I was in the gas station to get gas, and I will never forget it as long as I live. Paul Adler, I love you. Because if it had not been for you, I probably would have done something that day I had no business doing. May God continue to bless and keep you and your family safe during these challenging times. Be safe and take care of one another. 
God bless America. Hello. Thank you for braving COVID to be here. I will keep my words brief to allow you to get home quickly and safely. Due to the increase of the virus, I'm able to fly from Florida, and that's why I've asked Bob to read this for me. This has been a very difficult year in many ways. COVID has affected all of us, and especially first responders. Too many law enforcement officers have been infected, and far too many have died from this awful disease. Godspeed to all of them and prayers for their families. COVID was not the only issue to devastate law enforcement this year. The widespread protest and degradation of law enforcement has impacted all our lives. I personally have been called out on Facebook for not joining in protest or jumping in the fray. I had someone point to my survivor of the shield license plate and give me the finger. All of this is upsetting and I am reminded of the day Peter Page was killed at the mall and Ed and Chipper were gunned down in the street, right here where you're standing. I can't help but wonder what they would have thought and how they would react to all this unrest. I know who the murderers were on that awful day, and I know what they stood for, and I know who has been released. One of those released, Susan Rosenberg, is now on the board of Antifa an angry white woman of privilege, still spreading her lies and ideology of hate towards law enforcement. My recall of October 20th, 1981, was my Ed, a white police sergeant with a big grin, and his partner and friend, Chipper, a proud black man, both going to work to serve and protect the community. What they encountered that day was pure, unadulterated hatred and vile people expressing that hatred with violence. I never saw a black and white issue, not with Chipper murdered and his family as devastated as mine and Peter's were. In my mind, that day was a display of revulsion and contempt to what is right and loathing towards anyone in uniform. Ed, Chipper, Artie, and Brian were our community's first line of defense and were attacked on that afternoon. God help all of us if communities start tearing down and disbanding that first line of defense. We need to stand together, shoulder to shoulder as neighbors, friends, and family, regardless of color or religion. And most important, we need to stand behind and defend all our law enforcement members who are only doing their jobs as best they can. And that job is keeping communities safe. I know there is right and wrong, and I know there can be a bad seat in any place of work. That being said, most of our law enforcement in this country are decent, dedicated men and women who signed up to make a difference. They put their lives on the line each and every day to protect their communities. Far too many lose their lives, as Ed and Chipper did on October 20th, 1981. And on a personal note, I have not jumped into the fray because my son said to me, for the love of God, Ma, let Dad rest in peace. Wise words from Ed's son. On that note, though no one will force me or embarrass me to take down my blue flag, my blue flag bumper sticker, or my Survivor of the Shield plate, I will defend what they stand for, and this police widow will take on anyone who tells me I have to remove them. In my heart and in my soul, I will always belong to that large blue family of law enforcement. And I will always honor, respect, and defend them. God bless all, and please remain vigilant, and stay safe, and stay healthy. This, the 39th anniversary of a tragic day in Rockland County history. A horrific day for both the residents of Rockland County and our law enforcement community. As I look out at all of you here today, in a year that has produced so many challenges. I see many of the same faces that have stood here side by side over and over again for the past 39 years. And many new faces as well. Proudly recognizing three heroes, three brave men that made the ultimate sacrifice. Brinks guard Peter Page, police officer Waverly Chipper Brown, and Sergeant Edward O'Grady Jr. Their sacrifices 
had a lasting effect on the police community, their families, and our nation. But as long as we stand here together, year after year, and honor these three brave men who were so tragically taken from us, protecting our community and doing their jobs, they will never be forgotten. The senseless and cowardly acts that caused so much pain on that day in 1981 have not deterred us, but has made us stronger and have served as an inspiration to all of law enforcement, not only here in Rockland County, New York, but across our great nation. We continue to do what every officer is sworn to do, stay committed and serve and protect our communities here in Rockland County and again across our great nation. Let us all remember why we stand here today 39 years later. We do so to honor and respect three great men, Chip, Ed, and Peter. But it's more than that. It's a lot more than that. The terrorists didn't win that fearful day. And as long as we remember Ed, Chipper, and Peter, and the many dedicated officers like them, they will never win. Two other officers, Detective Artie Keenan and Police Officer Brian Lennon, also stood their ground with their brothers. They survived that horrific day 39 years ago. Every year I look out, it's usually over to my left, your right. I look and I usually saw Brian Lennon. Brian has passed away and he is deeply missed by many. But I want to recognize Artie for his dedication to the memory of his fallen comrades and his commitment to fighting to make sure those who perpetrated these acts of terror remain where they belong as long as possible. I would like to close by thanking all of you who took the time today to join us on this solemn occasion and ensuring the O'Grady, Brown, and Page families know that we will all never forget. May God bless all of you, and may God bless these United States of America. For a closing prayer. Reverend. And now, O oh God, we bring this ceremony to a close. In the days that lie ahead, we ask that you would teach us to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds. For Ed, Chipper, and Peter fought the good fight. They finished their course on this earth, and now they have received their great crown. We will always remember their great sacrifices, and we shall never forget the families that have been left behind. In closing, we now ask that you would not only protect all our brothers and sisters in law enforcement, but all members of our military who at this very moment are putting their lives on the line for each and every one of us. Hear our prayer, and may God bless America. And all said, Amen. While the storm clouds gather, across the sea, let us pay obedience to the man that's free. Let us all be grateful for a land so fair as we raise our voices in a solemn Beside her and guide her through the night with a light from above, from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, wide with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America. 
my own sweet home.